telling everyone who's here, obviously this is Daniel Shuler, the husband. That's his sister-in-law, Joyce Shuler. We have Jay Shuler. And we have Tom Ruskin, who's my investigator. And one of my son's Lance is here. All right. Um, <clears throat> We want to speak to you about the events that occurred and I'll tell you quite candidly that I didn't see any real benefit except my client in, wants to talk about his wife and some of the events. Uh, I can tell you in the 38 years I'm practicing law, this case has captured me and, and and just devastated my understanding of what life should should be. On the day in question, on on the day in question, they were not getting divorced. They were not in marital counseling. They had no marital problems. She was not an alcoholic. She rarely had a drink. She got in the van with the children. Nine witnesses saw her that day not drunk, with no alcohol breath, no pot breath. And what should have taken a 35 minute drive took almost four hours. Prior to getting into that car, she had numerous medical conditions, problems. One of them was an abscess which was almost two months old, which she would not go to the dentist for no matter how much he begged her. There was a swelling and there was pain on the left side. I believe it was, yes. She had diabetes at various levels. Excuse me. And then, remember the rule. If you want a question, you raise your hand. If not, I'll never point to you. Okay? She also had a lump on her leg. And the lump on the leg, we're not sure what it was, but it was moving. Uh... We have not yet decided to have a new autopsy. Now, my client is a public safety officer in Nassau County under the police department. I will not allow any questions about marijuana use at all. Marijuana use is not a crime anymore. It's a public health violation, but I don't want that answered. Uh, and he will not, and if you ask it, I will stop the question. He will talk to you. What I think what you all should want to know about his wife, the child he lost, the niece and nephews, his child that survived, and the relationship with the wife. First question, please. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Schuler, uh, Speak up, sir. Okay. Mr. Schuler, why did you not accompany your wife, or why did you take two uh, cars back? Uh, and why did you have no kids with you? Can you go down there? Can you let me go down there? Yes. I went up there a day earlier to open up the camper and to get a little fishing in by myself before all the kids came up. Can you talk about... Okay. Can you talk about the range of emotion that you've gone through over the last couple days? Sad. Very sad. Upset. Lost my daughter. Lost my wife. And all I have is my son. How is your son doing now? going to be good, better, getting there. Are you angry at your wife? No. I'm not angry at her. Has this put your family? I'm sorry. 
How can you explain her behavior? When? That day. Fine. You mean before he got... Before and after your conversations with her, she got to you take us through that morning. As normal. She, she was fine. We had a cup of coffee in the morning. We packed the cars up, like we always do. And we headed out. Just like every other weekend or every weekend we go up there. I might tell you that my investigators have already interviewed people at the uh, campsite. No one saw her that morning with alcohol, drunk, acting strange. Uh, the opposite. The opposite. Uh, the opposite. She was happy, talking to people, gave a kiss goodbye to the owner of the camp. And wave goodbye. And wave, and that person smelled her breath. There was definitely no alcohol when she left that campsite. Mr. Schuler, do you believe that the 911 tapes will reveal anything helpful? Next question, please. Can you explain the bottle of vodka? Sir. Yeah, the, the state police tells me um, that there was a bottle of absolute vodka uh, in the van. Can, do you know where that came from, whose it was? Or can you explain? No, I don't. Do you, know, do you think, were you aware, is it possible your wife may have had a drinking problem you weren't aware of? Definitely That's not. a very fair question. And, and, and let's start off with the questions asked did she have an alcohol problem? Did you know her to go to bars? Absolutely not. Did you know her to get drunk and, and act in... I never saw her drunk since the day I met her. Is it possible she was an alcoholic and you didn't know about it? Absolutely. Your question, please. Thank you. Um, are you saying that a medical condition could cause her to drink? Well, we don't know. Did she have a stroke and then have alcohol? You have to... If you believe the circumstances the way they are now described, you have to believe that a woman with five children in a car is smoking pot and drinking out of a bottle. By the way, the children in the car, and we can't tell you which one yet, spoke to one of, spoke to the father, their father. What did they say? She doesn't feel well, but nothing else. And we have now an eyewitness who called me last night you see, when she drives this distance, which is, should have been 40 minutes. Two and a half hours. No, 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 no. Where she went, leaving the uh, campsite to where she had the accident. Should be an hour? Approximately, yes. It's three hours of time used. She's on one side of the road. She crosses over dividers. She goes back over. This is not the actions of a person who's just drunk. Something happened and I think something happened I'll do you next. something happened to her brain that doesn't give me an answer does not give me an answer for the alcohol in her stomach or the marijuana marijuana allegedly there and I'm not saying that test is wrong here but something had to happen this is not a woman who would jeopardize five children she was the one they chose to always drive Yes. Speak up. That question was asked, but I'll answer sure. again. Question was, are we intending to exhume the body? And the answer is, we have not decided. We have not gotten all the results yet from the medical examiner. Sir, Ma'am? Mr. Schuller, did you speak with her at all during this trip? Absolutely. On, on, while she's driving home? No. No. I'm sorry. Uh, do you know um, which child spoke to her brother when he called, when she spoke to him on the phone? Do you yes, know which child? No. I'm sorry? It was Emma. Emma? And do you know what the conversation was? The first conversation was we had a great time. We were going to run a little bit late because they had play practice. And Diane said, Warren, we're running a little bit late. Emma and all the girls said they had a wonderful time. Now, That's it? the question asked of her. So more than one conversation? One of the conversations asked of her was, um, are you all right? And this person who spoke to her said she didn't sound drunk. She didn't sound slurred speech, but she sounded confused. Now, an eyewitness contacted me last night through my service. They spoke to me and said that he was on the parkway and next to her. 
she was driving at a very slow rate, not swerving, and he dialed the police, which I'm trying to get the information on. Are you saying there were more than one conversation? There were no? three conversations, four. four conversations, thank you, Tom, between the children and, and, and her, actually. Can I go by then? Yeah, sure, go ahead. What, what, what I think is important here, our investigation, we've only been involved for less than 24 hours now, has shown inconsistencies in the reporting of this incident. I've only seen that one call was received. We now know that there were four calls. We know where those calls went, and we're following up on those today. And we're going to try and determine what was said. Was she at all confused during those calls? Was she dazed? If we are going under the premise that she had a stroke, at that point in time, what, at what point was she in her medical condition? And, and by the way, the misgiving of information, we are not blaming, no, you can say that, Tommy. No, we're, right, we're not blaming on the state police or the district attorney's office. It's just more information seems to be coming out. And, I, and again, this eyewitness, which I'm trying to get to meet with, or he is today, says that she seemed to be looking around as confused in some way. And he waved to her uh, to maybe pull over and she didn't. Uh, we don't have all of it yet and we'll have to find out. The question asked, and I'd like to get to it, the human side for a moment. That's what I was about. Okay. Uh, this man loved this woman. He is in a daze from all of this. Absolutely. There was no, was there discussions of a divorce? Absolutely not. I love my wife and we love each other. There's been so much negative press now surrounding your wife. It couldn't be any worse. How do you want everyone to remember your wife? She was a perfect wife, an outstanding mother, hard worker reliable person, trustworthy. I would marry again tomorrow, but she's awesome. She's the best. And your daughter. Tell us about your daughter. It's my little girl. She's gone. I don't know what else to say about that. My little girl. And will life go on now for you, focusing on your son? Absolutely. I promised my wife I will take care of my son the way she wanted me to. That's what I'm going to do. When did you receive the toxicology report and what was your reaction to it? I don't think you've read it. Sure. Uh, I don't know what he said. He asked you when did you receive the toxicology. I have not given him to read yet. When you heard so far the autopsy said no signs of a stroke or diabetes, are you saying that? That's not, uh, first of all, what you're saying uh, is what the newspaper said, correct? Okay, well, let me tell you something. There was a name in the in the newspaper today that used to go to a bar with her and get drunk. The name was Sheila. Sheila, did you ever meet a Sheila? Never. Did you ever speak to a Sheila? Never. When his their lifestyle was that he his wife would go to work, the babysitter who's here. I watch my kids during the day. I work nights. When the babysitter was there for a short time, then he'd leave to go to work, and then the wife came home. The babysitter has told me, I never saw her drunk. I never saw her smoke pot. I she never saw And she was there how many days a week? Five days. Four, four, five days. Four, four days a week. So okay. Sure when you got the, when you I'm sorry. The for, about the drunk, well, you, you spoke out, and we're not going to do it that way. I know. I'll get reaction? to you. Yes, sir. That's okay. I just want to keep it organized. I think we're doing great. I will come back to you, ma'am. 911 tape. Do you think they'll be helpful? Yeah, Tom. I, I, I think that the 911 tapes will tell us a lot. We're working in conjunction with the state police and the prosecutor's office to really try and understand for Daniel and his family's purpose what really happened here. This is so out of character for this woman. It, there has to be some other explanation. Yes, ma'am. So my question is, when you heard the toxicology report that she was supposedly drunk and high, what was your reaction? I'm not sure. 
which would never happen. Shock. It's not true. Yeah. No. Can you just elaborate a little yeah. on your reaction to? I mean, if, if you're saying it was totally out of character, can you just elaborate? A little? Unbelievable. Right? Shock. Say it. Not true. I think Joyce is someone you also might want to speak to. Jane, I mean. Which? Jay. Jay, Jay I apologize. Come over, Jay. All right. This was her dearest friend, close relative, married to her. Your full name, please. My name, my Jay Schuler. And you're married to? I'm married to Danny's brother, Jimmy Schuler. Diane was my sister-in-law. J J A Y. Diane was my sister-in-law. I've known Diane for years. Diane and I spent a lot of time together. I left the country to visit relatives and I left my son Evan in Diane's care. She drove him back and forth to school. She drove him back and forth to baseball. Every, anything I needed with Evan, she was there. There was nobody. We trust family, nobody else. I, Diane, I didn't have to leave a list of telling her what to do. It's automatic. She knew what to do. Diane was a nanny before she became a Cablevision executive. She loved children. Her nieces were her girls. There's no way I've known Diane. We socialize, we do family barbecues. Family was the most important thing to her, to have the cousins all playing together. There is no way she would ever jeopardize the children. So, yes, there wasn't sir. any health problem that contributed to her on well, Diane was like very, Diane would, would not. Thing might have happened to her that made her, made her drink well, how would she know? Saying, did she ever have Diane was a trooper. Complaint? She would never complain. She would not go to a doctor. She was a trooper. She, nothing hurt her. But she never had, she wasn't like suicidal? Oh, no. Oh, like that. That's a fair question. Was she psychiatrically That's suicidal, no. depressed when she talked about that? Absolutely no, not. No way. No way. No Absolutely way. not. She loved her kids. And Erin, who is my goddaughter, our little girl. No one in the Shula family, we haven't had little girls. This was our first little girl on the Shula side. And I, the grandparents are in mourning. This is our, our baby girl. Don't you me. have to understand, this is tragic. We're forgetting about Erin, Diane, and the three Hans girls. Sir? There have been questions, the state police have made statements about not getting full cooperation from the family. Can you address those concerns? Absolutely, that's not so. We've been we, mourning. We've been in a little bit of mourning. We are going to meet again with them. Uh, my client's been interviewed already, no holds barred, spoke about everything. Danny's been at the hospital. And, and Danny goes to the hospital every day, all day. He doesn't leave. He stays alive. He stays. One Dan second. Explanation for this. What can you think of that could possibly have caused this? Rain. He says it has to be a stroke. I go to, to bed something. every night knowing, and listen to this. I go to bed every night knowing my heart is clear. She did not drink. She's not an alcoholic. Listen to all that. She is not an alcoholic, and my heart is resting every night when I go to bed. Something medically had to happen. Dominic, Dominic. Are, are you saying? Dominic? Yes. Be doing it's gonna be a time. long road, but he will get. He will do well. Don't forget, he's lost his. Again? Well, we don't know yet. We don't but know. don't forget, he lost his cousins and his mother and, and his, his baby sister and his baby sister. Can, can I ask everything? Do you have anything to say about the Bastardi family? Involved? We uh, the Bastardi family. We grieve for them. Very sorry. Very sorry. We grieve for them also. All right, we're gonna do about three more questions, and that's it. So. Who didn't get a question yet? Can I ask a question, please? Who didn't? I did not. Go ahead. Uh, are you trying to say that you do not believe the toxology report that she was not drunk? They cannot be true. There's, you're saying there's no way that she could have been drunk? No way. No way. The bottle of vodka that they found? No, it can't be true. It exists? We, we don't, we don't know. Can I ask my question, please? What, what Yes. Can you give a, a more detailed description of what happened before she went off on the trip yeah, home? Saturday like, and what, you, what you had to eat together, what yeah. conversation? Why don't we do it from the moment they got up? And that'll be the end. Yeah. When you got up that day, what happened? Can you get closer to the yeah, you come to the middle. Right from the moment you woke up. I woke up at 6 o'clock. I went down to my boat to clean it out and do what I got to do. Came back about quarter to 7, 7 o'clock. I woke her up saying we had to start cleaning the camper so we can start getting home before traffic. 
She woke up, started packing the bag slowly, started waking the kids up slowly, started getting the kids dressed. We unloaded the camper, all the bags, outside the camper, and I walk them to the car and we load them up. We had a cup of coffee, two cups of coffee, and then we left. Do you remember your last words? Yeah, I kissed everyone goodbye and my wife. That's it. Thank you.